Welcome to Marketing Made Simple TV. I'm Jeff Ogden, the host of the show, and I'm thrilled to have you back once again. And we have another wonderful guest for you today. Patty Azzarello of the Azzarello Group is an executive with more than 25 years of experience working in high tech and business. She's held leadership roles in a lot of areas, general management, marketing, software product development, and sales. She's been successful in running, transforming large and small businesses and has significant international management experience too. She became the youngest general manager at HP at the tender age of 33. She ran a billion dollar software bid business at 35. And this is my favorite one. She became the CEO for the first time at age 38 without turning into a self-centered, miserable jerk. I thought that was pretty cool. And she was featured in Forbes magazine called, in a column called Women We Love. So let's welcome Patty to the show. Hi, Jeff. It's great to be here. Hey, it's great to have you here. And uh, I said that you uh, sent me this book with a nice note in the front of it, and I read it. I enjoyed it a lot, and I was really excited about having you on the show. Great. So... Patty, I'll start you off with a question I ask every guest on the show. It's a tradition of the show, and it's a really simple question. Who are you, and what do you do? My name is Patty Azzarello, and I describe myself as a recovering high-tech executive. I had a successful career in technology, and six years ago, I started my own company, and I now work with businesses and management teams and business leaders to help them get better at what they do. Thanks, Patty. And I also know you just recently gave the keynote uh, talk at the Marketo Marketing Summit recently. So tell us a little bit about that experience. How was it fun, how was it fun getting in front of a big audience and giving a keynote speech? That was such a great event. Marketo is really a special company. Everything I've ever interact with them, there is just so much energy and the event was just crazy. There were, I think, a couple thousand people in the room and I was asked to talk about building a career in marketing and it was really fun. I, I talked a lot about the fact that you're supposed to be thriving at work, and there are a lot of uh, stones and arrows that come at you when you're in a marketing role, and it was fun to just be able to share some of my experience helping people who are now building their career in marketing. Very good. I'm sure it's, I've, I've dealt with Marketo quite a lot, and they are a very fun company, so I'm sure you had a wonderful yeah. time, so yeah, and that's good. I think companies should be fun. Life's too short. So anyway, you, this book which you wrote, which is Rise, and it's uh, practical advice on advancing your career, standing out a, as a leader, and loving your life. So that's pretty cool. So why don't you tell us about how the book came about? You know, what was your idea of writing it, and uh, what was the experience of writing a book like? I wrote Rise for a couple of reasons. One was that as I advanced my own career very quickly, I just thought about how much help I had. I had so many mentors and smart people who cared about me. And what I realized was that I had learned a lot of secrets that most people weren't getting told. And I felt like I just wanted to share that, just tell all the secrets. But the two things that I put in Rise and the two real motivations were that I really hate seeing people, it breaks my heart to see people hating their job and just sort of kind of slogging through life, hating their job and not really enjoying what they're doing and doing it just because they need the money, but otherwise they're really miserable. I just think that's such a shame and it doesn't have to be that way. And one of the key messages in Rise is that it doesn't have to be that way. The other key message in RISE is just about all of the political crap and obstacles that get in your way when you're trying to build a career and all the things I learned about overcoming them. So I wanted to get across those two things and share that with people. That's certainly a worthy thing to, uh, to do because you're right, a lot of people hate their jobs. And one of the things that you talk about in the book is a misconception. Everyone thinks that when they get into a management position, they just need to work really hard, long hours and, and 
you know, put their nose to the grindstone and work and work and work. And that's one of the things you say in your book, that's not what it's about. So tell us about that. Yeah, I think people do find that initially confusing when I say it's not about the work because you're at work to work. But what I realized is the key to success and the key to being happier and more satisfied at your job is just taking a point of view where you refuse to burn up so much of your time on low value, thankless work. And instead, you really take it upon yourself to determine what's going to have the most impact. And if you start tuning your work to make sure that it's having the most impact, what you're thinking about is not just working. You're thinking about how do I add value? How do I make a difference? How do I help my company move forward? And those are the things that create your success. Just coming in early and staying late and working hard and being really busy, sometimes it, you know, it makes people feel important and they can brag about how hard they work. But if people just look at you and see you working all the time but have no idea why or what you're doing or why it matters or if you're adding value, you're not being successful. You're just getting buried in work. Good. So you have three main topics in this book, which are to do better, to look better, and connect better. So why don't you go, go over those three main points in your book? Yes. So I think I also sent a graphic on this, which may be helpful for your quickly talk through this to see. Do better is really about this changing the work. Do better work. Make sure your work has more impact. And a big piece of this is about using your strengths, which I can talk more about. I, I think that is one of the just keys to the keys to the kingdom is figuring out how to better use your strength. Look better is about making sure you're not invisible. Being invisible does not work. You have to show your good work to the people to whom it matters. And the way I talk about it in the book is be visible, but not annoying, <laughs> because being annoying doesn't work either. And then finally, it's connect better. And connect better is about getting support and sponsorship for your work and your career. The most successful people were not the people who are so good they don't need help. The most successful people are the ones who get the most help. And so it's critically important. And I organized the book into these three sections because I see a lot of people that just fall into the trap of thinking it's all about the work and they just work harder and harder and harder and they never even consider the look better and the connect better pieces. So all three are important in, in building your success and creating a way to make your work fit into your life so that you like your life. Interesting. And uh, one of the things I saw a lot of in the book and something I believe in a lot are mentors. And you certainly in your career had a lot of great mentors that helped you with, with your career. Uh, talk to us about the need for mentors, the people to develop good mentors. I can tell you hosting a TV show is a great way to get mentors too. <laughs> <laughs> Great that you bring up that, that particular point, because if I look at my success outside of my own efforts, mentors played the biggest role in my success by far. And I, I liken it to attempting a career without mentors is like attempting to climb Mount Everest without a Sherpa and a guide. Sure, you could try it, but why on earth would you? The mentors in my career were the ones that they helped me learn things when I didn't know how to do them. They helped me when I was scared or nervous or felt like I was in over my head, and they helped me find a way through those tough spots. And they also can open doors for you. They have bigger networks than you do, and, and that is often the case to opportunity, is that mentors know you, they care about you, 
they have a reason to help you move forward so when they see opportunities, they can help open those doors. And so for me, I just could not imagine my career without the help of mentors, which I have just been so grateful for. I think that's a great, uh, great idea, Patty. I think mentors are just so important in everyone's career. Let's talk another uh, idea you brought out in the book of looking better. And, I'm, and by that I mean investing in yourself, right? That it's not just about the job, but you need to take care of yourself. You need to, as you said, you know, be visible but not annoying too. So let's talk to us about the whole look better idea. wonderful example of this. I got an email from a young woman in the UK who was in marketing and she said she had read my book and she wanted to thank me because it got her two raises and a promotion. And I was so intrigued and delighted by this email that I contacted her and we actually had a chance to get together and she told me a story that is absolutely the look better thing. I asked her, you know, what specifically was it that was such magic for you? And she was responsible for marketing for the part of her business, uh, the part of her company that was conferences. And over the course of about a year, with her focused efforts, this company's conference business grew substantially and it grew ahead of market. And it was because of her efforts and, and what she was able to do. And about 18 months later, she was in a meeting with the CEO, and the CEO was reviewing some spreadsheets of the results, and he looked at their conference business and how it was doing so well. And he said, wow, you know, I thought the conference market was declining, but I guess the market's turned around because we're doing better now. And she was just livid. The market had not turned around. The market was still declining. And she realized that her contribution was completely invisible. And so what she set out to do was to, as she did her marketing work, she would share what she was doing. She would share the results. She would share the progress with the people who cared, the CEO being one of them. And then after some amount of time, she was getting that recognition for her contribution which resulted in those raises and the promotion. And I think that's just such a good example because so many of us just think, well, it's about the work and I'm going to do my job and then that'll be recognized. And it's not that people are trying to be miserly or mean about not recognizing your work. It's just that everybody is busy. And unless you take it upon yourself to make your work visible and share what you learned and share what you accomplished with the people who matter, you run the risk of being invisible and you just run the risk of being passed over. I think that's such a great takeaway from this show, Patty, that, that you have to market yourself in a company, that you have to communicate and, 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 and do it in a way, like you said, that's not annoying, right? You're not pounding people many times a day, but you're, you're sharing what you're doing. But one other thing I want to talk about, and I had some experience with this in my career, of you have a job description you're hired to do, right? But kind of in your book you said, throw away the job description. Look at what you need to make that job into to deliver results. So talk to us about that, about recreating your job in a way that produces results for the business. It's such an important point. And it's not, it's not about throwing away your job description as much as it's about breaking free of the limits of your job description and recognizing that your job description as it's handed to you is not a life sentence. And you are going to be far better off understanding, number one, what the company values and what are the things that are potentially missing in your job description, because your job description is just one point in time and then business moves on. So you have to constantly be understanding what's changing in your business and what things you need to add to your job description so that you can be adding more value. You need to evolve your job as the business evolves. But the second thing that is just so important 
with regard to evolving your job description is to is to evolve it in a way that it suits your natural strengths. And this is really one of the big secrets that I discovered in life is that if you are working in your area of natural strengths, that's when you feel like you're thriving. That's where you gather energy. That's what successful people do. They figure out what they are naturally good at and then they contrive their circumstances and they redefine their job to put themselves in a position to be doing what they're good at most of the time. And so that's really the way to think about evolving and breaking free of your job description. Number one is make sure you are evolving to continue to do what the business values and then make sure you're always negotiating in, in terms of your performance objectives and the kind of work you want to take on new work that really suits your strengths because then two things happen. One, you're hugely successful because you're doing things that you're naturally good at so it goes fast and it goes easily and you're creating results and you have a lot of energy for it. But then people see you doing that kind of work and you get famous for doing that kind of work. So you attract more of that kind of work over time and that's really when your career can take off when you get recognized for doing such a wonderful job when you're working in your area of greatest strengths. This has been a great discussion, Patty. So if there's someone watching this show right now that, that is, has a promotion coming up or they're becoming into, a, you know, they're getting into a more senior role, what would you want to say to those people about what they should be looking at when they take on that role? Well, first, you should read Rise, <laughs> because all of the secrets are, are in that book. And it's funny, I always feel kind of awkward saying that, but I didn't write Rise to sell a bunch of books. I really wrote it to help people. And there is so much advice for somebody taking a step up. And I think the one thing I'll, I'll leave your viewers with here is when you step up, when you're getting ready for a bigger job or going after a promotion, make sure you really understand just how different that job is. Every time you step up a level, the game changes. And what it means to be good at at that job changes. And the things you really need to value about yourself and the things that your company will value and define as competent in that bigger job, those are different things. And so you have to get yourself prepared for that. And the best way to get prepared for that is to meet as many people as you can that do that new job, that do that bigger job, and learn everything you can learn about what they know, about what the experts in that job know, and just be a sponge and absorb all kinds of things. There's a whole chapter in the book on this point called the experience paradox. And this is something I think is just a very, a very good takeaway, which is you can't get the job without having the experience, but you can get the experience before you have the job. And that's really what your career development is about, is about targeting that job that you want and even though you don't have the title, go volunteer and get yourself some of that work so that by the time you interview for that job, even though you don't have that title on your resume, you have that experience on your resume. And that's the way I moved my own career forward every step of the way. And the great thing about it is it's something that's within your own control. Patty, that's a wonderful takeaway from this show. Uh, just go out and get the experience and do the, do the job even if you don't have the title. Great information. So anyway, I'm sure people watching the show, our last question is they want to learn more about you, the Azarella Group, and this book, Rise. And we'll put a call to action in the show too. But tell us how, what's the best way for people to contact you, email, Twitter, what, you know, what's the best way? I'm on Twitter and on Facebook, um, at Patty Azzarello on Twitter. My website is azzarellogroup.com. 
And you can also get to my website with a shorthand, which is easier than my name, Azarello, if you just go to risebook, R-I-S-E book dot com. And you can find all of the links to find me everywhere else once you get there. I want to thank Patty Azarello for being a wonderful guest on the show. I want to again plug this book, Rise, Three Practical Steps for Advancing Your Career, Standing Out as a Leader, and Liking Your Life. Um, Patty does have a rather long Italian last name, so just go to risebook.com. Before we go, we want to thank our sponsors because they make the show possible. Avatage, a great content marketing company. Um, Avatage.com. Digital Ethos is replaced by socialmediaclub.org, I think it is. Communication Strategy Group, brandtelling.com. Eloqua Revenue Performance Management, Eloqua.com, and of course, the wonderful provider of this platform that we use for the show, that does our TV on the web show, which is Watchitude, Watchitude.com. Marketing Made Simple TV premieres every Thursday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. So until next time, we'll see you again on Marketing Made Simple TV.